Stop it. Stop it. Okay. I'll bring you out after. I'll bring you out after. Don't you worry. No, get in. 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 Cara, in. When you look in their eyes, you're nearly looking into their souls. They're the most quietest, gentlest creatures you will come across. Hi, I'm Michael McGrath. I am retired, early retirement, early redundancy. And what I do now is I transport Irish dogs from Irish rescues to UK rescues on a not-for-profit basis. Jago is a greyhound. He's seven years of age. We adopted him when he was about six months old and that's where everything, that's where it all started. That's where things took a change. How he came to be in Dog's Trust was the, his mother was left tied to the gate, pregnant, and she gave birth to two greyhounds in there, and him being one of them. Now, she, they would have been ex and hunting dogs, and for whatever reason, dumped, usually injury yeah. or age. I could see that there was a need for transporting dogs. So I saw there was a niche there, so I bought a van and started driving around the country for rescues. Yeah. Um, taking them from pounds, taking them from the rescue to their fosters, the whole lot. Um, yeah. That's where it started. Yeah. Cara is a lurcher. Along with greyhounds, they're probably one of the most abused breeds in Ireland. If they're injured or they're not good at hunting, they're usually dumped and they can be found in horrendous conditions. We had just lost two of our Rottweilers within a month through cancer. And next of all, this video appeared of this poor dog with her head in a corner, afraid terrified to look at anyone. As soon as Teresa saw this, that's it, we had to have her. Now it took a few months before we could get her because she was so eaten with mange and had so many issues. The whole story went viral. We had phone calls from journalists in New York, from all over the world. Everyone picked up on the, the happy story, as we say. Yeah. But she, her video has around 12 and a half million views at the moment. And still people contact to see whatever happened to that dog. Yeah. But she recovered quite quickly, and today she's the cheeky yeah. little madam that she is. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <Cara>. <laughs> Honey is our latest addition. She's a whippet. She's a very unusual colour in that she's what we call a blue merle, <laughs> and here she is. <laughs> what she was used for, she was used for hunting. So she spent her first two years of her life being kept at a shed and just brought out to hunt. She was quite, quite shy, but now, like, like Cara and like Jago, she's got the confidence to be herself. And that, to me, is what it's all about. Yeah. Having, giving them the confidence to be what they should be. Yeah. What makes me so anti-racing is the fact that I see the other side of it. I see the dark side of it. I look at him and say, how many thousands never get the chance to sit on a sofa, to go out for a walk, to be loved? Yeah. And that's what makes me so, so anti-racing. Yeah. I see the horrible side of it. I see the rescue side of it, where they're abandoned, where they're dumped with injuries, full of fleas, mange. It's, it's absolutely horrendous. You don't see this on their glitzy night out posters for the Shelbourne Park, you know, have your party here, come on out and race, and the dogs love it, and they love to chase the hare. They love to chase the hare because it's probably the only time they get out of a kennel. The amount I've seen that come out just totally shut down, not used to human contact, it's, it's, it's horrendous. It really is awful. The face is put on that's a glitzy and the dogs are great and look at them and this, but it's, it's the background. It's when I'm taking them out of pounds and they're in there because they've unfixed injuries, broken legs, broken toes, broken hocks, left untreated because it's not viable because why would they bother because they can't run and make any money again yeah. so a lot of them are just abandoned and left like that the amount of greyhounds in rescues across the country it's 
it's it's sickening. We protest outside Shelburne Park every Saturday. Even during the lockdown, anyone within the five, any one of our advocates within five kilometres, we will travel to Shelbourne because they're still allowing racing to go on behind closed doors. It's classified, even during the strictest of lockdown, as an elite sport. So they allow owners and trainers to travel with their dogs to Shelbourne Park to race behind closed doors purely to distribute to RPG TV or SIS as a betting product for betting shops around the world. Mm -hmm. It's not a hobby, it's a business. People will say, oh, they're enthusiastic, they love their dogs and they race for the fun of it. It's not, it's a pure business. Our numbers are diminished because we have to stick with the five kilometer rule. Mm -hmm. But we still have a presence of people who are dedicated to those dogs and said, if those dogs are still suffering and being forced into this lifestyle and to run, we will be there for them. When you look at him and see, they all deserve that. Not just machines. <laughs> Come on then. We're getting overrun now. We're getting overrun now. <laughs> this is what it's about. <laughs>